So in this problem we have another determinant structure where we have to find the reactions at support the supports and pin C. In addition, we're going to go ahead and find the maximum shear in moments. So this is something you might be asked to do in a static string structural analysis type class or even on the FE where they ask you, well, what's the maximum moment? Where is it? All right, so to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is draw uh, a free body diagram to find our reactions. So let's do that. So when I draw my free body diagram, the first thing that I always do is I just copy the structure down and, and eliminate their support. So then I can put those back in as reactions. And we know at D we have one reaction, which is a vertical reaction, and we're gonna call that DY. Whereas at A, now what we have here are three reactions with a rigid, or a rigid base or a fixed base. We're gonna say AY, we also would have AX. I'm gonna draw AX coming this way. And we also would have a moment. And now this is kind of where we get to guess. Well, which way is the moment gonna go? Okay, and if five kilonewtons is pushing in a you know a, a clockwise sense, I'm just going to assume that our moment at A is going to go counterclockwise. All right. So after we do that, we look and we see. Well, are there any equations that we can solve? Okay. So we have A Y and D Y, two forces in the y direction. Well, we have two unknowns there. We can't really solve that. A X. That's one force in the x direction. No other force in the x direction. So we can solve that. So let's go ahead and, and solve for for A X. So if we do some of the forces in the x direction equals zero, we know that anything to the right is positive. So we have minus A X plus five kilonewtons equals zero and AX equals five kilonewtons. Okay, one done. But we still have this problem where, you know, you might be saying, well, why don't we just take moments? Well, if we take moments about point A, and let's do it. Let's see what happens. So if we take moments about point A, right, this equals zero. And what we know is we have to take anything that causes a moment about point A, and that'll that'll need to get written into this equation. So, you know, maybe we start with this five kilonewtons, minus five kilonewtons, times a distance here, distance from the line of action to point A. That distance is gonna be uh, five meters. And then what else do we have? Well, we know dy is gonna cause a moment. So we're gonna say, uh, oh, let me put my five meters in here. So dy is gonna cause a moment. And the line of action of that force is you know here times um, the horizontal distance, which is the horizontal distance, well, we have 14 minus force. This is going to be 10 meters of horizontal distance for that moment arm. So let's put that in. We have plus dy times 10 meters. And if you want to know why it's plus, well, because this is causing a, a clockwise rotation about point A, and that matches um, with our sign convention. Okay. So Next, let's look and we say, what else do we have? Well, we know that we have some resultant from this force here, some resultant from you know, this 400 newtons per meter. And what's that gonna be? Well, it's 400 newtons per meter times the total distance of 14 meters. And when we do that out, we get 5,600 newtons. And I like to just do a conversion there to 5.6 kilonewtons. All right, so that's our resultant, and we have to include that in. Well, that one's gonna cause rotation. It kind of goes in this direction, if you can picture it, right? That's gonna be opposite of our positive sign convention, so we're gonna do a negative. So let's put that in. So we're gonna say minus 5.6 kilonewtons. And, and then what's the moment arm? Well, the moment arm is gonna be from the line of action of this force, right, 2.A. So the, the vertical line of action of this force it, it 2.8. I'm going to draw it over here just to uh, make it a little bit clearer. But what we know is this is going to be 7 meters from the end or 3 meters from the point A. So we'll multiply this by 3 meters. And you might say, that's great. We have one, one unknown, right? But what did I forget? Well, I didn't forget it. I just left it out, right? Because this moment at A, this moment at A has to be included in the equation. So we have to include plus MA, right? I mean, if you put your pencil right here on the paper and, and try and rotate this thing, this whole thing is gonna wanna rotate. And it's gonna wanna rotate in the direction of MA, okay? That's a positive rotation. So what we can't forget this value. That value is really important to solving this problem. But what it does highlight is that we have two unknowns, right? And these two unknowns, um, we can't solve with just one equation. So again, you could throw, throw your hands up and say, um, I don't like this, or you could push on and try and learn, all right? So what do we do? Well, we need another free body diagram. So what free body diagram can we can we draw? Well, the obvious place to separate this structure, or draw another free body diagram, is at this pin, right? So at this pin, we know that we only transfer shear and axial force. So let's draw two free body diagrams, one for the top, one for you know the bottom member, and we'll keep going. 
So I'm gonna make a little bit of space here and just move my structure down and then we'll we'll draw those diagrams in. So I've copied the structure down and I've split it apart at the pin, right? And we know at a pin what we have is we're gonna end up with two forces. We're gonna end up with a vertical force, like what we could say is, you know, CY, and we're also potentially gonna have some horizontal force, right? We could call this, you know, CX. And on the opposite side of the pin, this is true with all frames, when you split a pin apart, the forces are equal and opposite, right? So CY in this case would be going down, CX would be going to the right. Okay, I mean, the way I think of it is, right, if you're a person here, very fancy person, you are exerting a force down on a floor, and that floor is exerting a force back up on you, okay? Simple thing, but you gotta you gotta understand that concept so once we get these we can label these and this is the free body diagram for BCD you know this is the free body the free body diagram for ABC right but what we get here is is three new sets of uh, of equations where we can we can redo our equations of equilibrium to solve so with this one let's just start so what we can say here is well we know that the sum of the forces in the X direction equals zero right so what do we get well we get CX plus five kilonewtons plus or minus AX equals zero. Well, we've already solved for AX up above. If you remember, we had AX equals five kilonewtons, right? So we can pull that back down here. And when we do that, we get CX you know, plus five kilonewtons minus five kilonewtons equals zero. So CX equals zero. So we've solved for something else, right? And that's good, that, that helps us. It also gets us to, you know, notice up here, well, CX, this is, you know, we could have done the same thing here. We could have said, right, we have some of the forces in the X direction equals zero, CX equals zero, same result, okay? And different free body diagram, same result. Okay, but next what we can do is we can look and we can say, well, what else can we solve for, okay? And this is where we can start applying different equations of equilibrium. So, for example, we could say, well, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Let's just pick this one, you know? What we see is ay goes up, cy goes down. So ay minus cy equals zero, ay equals cy. But we don't know what they are yet, right? We, we don't know what that is. So we need another, another thing to solve it, right? So we can come up here and we can say, well, typically in the past when we've just done beams, right, if we sum moments about one point, we can solve for the other reaction. Or if we sum moments about this point, we can solve for this reaction. So let's sum moments here. And I'm just gonna sum moments about, you know, point C equals zero. And what, what, what do we get there? Well, we get a force that causes a moment and this force is the re result in which we said was 5.6 kilonewtons and when we solve this right what we're gonna do is we're gonna you know basically do our, our same um, equations of equilibrium here some of the moments we get minus R times 3 meters if you remember uh, this distance was 3 meters and then we get plus dy times and this is where we need to know our distance but this distance was 10 meters okay so D times 10 meters so when you do that, we're gonna get, well, R was 5.6, so dy is going to equal, we get 5.6 times three, which is 16.8 divided by 10, and that's gonna give us 1.68 kilonewtons. Okay, so next what we do is, well, that still hasn't helped us with A, Y, and C, Y, but what we do know is we can keep going here and we can say, well, we have the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Anything that's up is positive, down is negative. Cy plus dy minus 5.6 kilonewtons, that's the resultant, is gonna equal zero. So what does this mean? It means that if we put 5.6 on this side, subtract off 1.68, we, we're gonna get Cy equal to 3.92 kilonewtons. All right, so we're, we're just solving this one equation at a time. When we know this is 3.92, we can come back in, substitute in, and all of a sudden we have Ay equals 3.92 kilonewtons also. Okay, there's no other vertical forces on this free body diagram, so Ay has to equal Cy. Lastly, right, what we can do here is we can say, oh wait, we just solved something that we can use. So we can take Dy and, and we can substitute it in you know, up here. And when we do that, we, we're left with one unknown that we can solve for. So let's put those numbers in. And when we do the math out, we're gonna get MA equal to 25 kilonewton 
meters. So what we can do is we can actually check that now using this free body diagram. So let's just, let's check it for fun, right? To see if it actually works out the way we hoped, right? So if we sum moments about point A now, right? What do we get? Well, we know that this has to equal zero, right? And what causes a moment about A? Well, we know that the moment at A causes a moment at A, right? And, you know, CX would, but CX is zero, so that doesn't, we don't have to worry about that, but this five kilonewtons does. So the moment at A just has to equal, right? What does this have to equal? Well, we have to minus five kilonewtons times our moment arm here, which is five meters. And hopefully you're seeing this, this getting solved already, but the moment at A equals 25 kilonewton meters. And it's always nice in, in like these types of problems where you can do things two ways and get a solution, and especially when those solutions match. Okay, so this is just a check. It's not needed, but it helps us feel good about our results. So that's kind of the basics on the reactions, right? The reactions, I say basics, but we ended up having to do, you know, to solve this problem, we had to break it up. So, you know, you might look at the whole structure and think like, well, we can only solve certain things with that whole structured free body diagram. So when you break it up, it gives you more structures that you can solve with your equations of equilibrium. So here we were able to go through and solve for CX and CY. Okay, we were all able to solve for AY and uh, AX was, was up here, okay? In addition, we solved for the moment at A and DY. So we solved for our six different reactions on, on this structure. And that's the, that's the end of the reactions. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these reactions, we're gonna draw them into a load diagram where we're gonna go and find our maximum shear and moment by drawing the load shear and moment diagram. So if you wanna see that, click the video that's on the screen now. Um, but otherwise, if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. Keep working hard, moving onward and upward.